Workers carrying out a study crucial to scrapping nuclear reactors at Fukushima Daiichi have hit a new snag. They're trying to find out the condition of molten fuel inside, but sources say devices developed to take X-ray-like photos through the number two reactor are too large to install. The Japanese government and the Tokyo Electric Power Company spent more than $4 million to develop them. The devices use elementary particles called muons. Muons rain down on Earth from space. When the particles hit a high-density object, they lose energy or are absorbed. Scientists can then use the outcome to determine the shape of a substance. Researchers want to use this technique to gain a better understanding of the situation inside the reactor. Studies using muon detectors have been underway at the plant's number one reactor since February. The new devices for the number two reactor are aimed at trying to obtain photos with higher resolutions. But the 8 by 8 meter objects need to fit the building. Crews notice the installment will require the removal and decontamination of other equipment. They believe that could affect other decommissioning work. And they also learned it would cost more than double the price spent creating the devices to put them in. Government officials and the operator have decided to divert devices in the number one reactor to the number two reactor to start the study as early as by the end of this year. They say if the change works, the new devices may be abandoned. And they say a robot probe originally planned to be used in this month has been delayed because of the preparation setback. Fukushima Diary by Mochi Zuki August 5, 2015 Another Fukushima worker died after leaving the frozen wall area. TEPCO The cause of death is not identified. On August 3, 2015, TEPCO reported that another Fukushima worker died two days before. The worker was male in 30s. He worked from 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. for the Frozen Water Wall project on August 1, 2015. On the way home, he stopped at J Village for ill health. He was immediately sent to the hospital but confirmed to be dead around 1300 hours. Depco states the cause of death is not identified, but the former Fukushima worker happy 11,311 posted on Twitter that the worker died of heat stroke. There is a possibility that Tepco withheld the announcement of the death not to cause a scandal before removing the debris of fuel handling machine from SFP-3, spin fuel pool of Reactor 3. Regarding the delayed announcement, Tepco comments they should have announced promptly. Also from Tepco's report, a monitoring alarm of Fukushima plant went off at about 11 o'clock of August 1, 2015. TEPCO denies the possibility of a significant leakage of radioactive material to comment they think just was accidentally attached to the detector.
record number of households in Japan are on welfare due to an increase in elderly citizens who need support. Ministry officials said recipients during May stood at more than 1.6 million. That's up about 1,600 from the previous month. Households headed by seniors aged 65 or older accounted for half the total, rising to nearly 800,000. That's up by more than 1,400. Younger recipients fell by more than 500 to 274,000. Welfare households with members who are sick or injured stayed almost flat at 255,000. Ministry officials say the number of those who will need assistance will likely rise in the future along with the aging officials population. Officials at Japan's Meteorological Agency, or JMA, are trying to keep people safe during volcanic eruptions. They've launched a system to issue faster warnings so mountain climbers and local residents can escape harm. NHK World's Yastaka Ueki has more. Officials were prompted to act by the deadly outburst last September on Mount Ontake in central Japan. The mountain erupted without warning, killing 58 people and leaving five others missing. They say the new system will help keep climbers safe by sending out an immediate alert. There are 110 active volcanoes in the country. The new system covers 47 that are under constant surveillance. In the event of an eruption, a warning would go out within five minutes. Officials will decide to send the alerts based on footage from surveillance cameras, as well as seismic activity where eruptions are thought to have occurred. The system covers a variety of scenarios. It will send an alert when activity occurs on a volcano that has not erupted for a certain amount of time. It will also inform people when an ongoing eruption grows in intensity. We're going to step up efforts to monitor volcanoes so we can provide more detailed information. We want to advise people to check information about volcanic activities and hazard maps before approaching a volcano. People can check the warnings by accessing the JMA website. Registered members of service providers can receive the warnings as a message on their mobile phones or via smartphone app. The alerts will also be sent out on a community wireless system. Officials say the system is chiefly designed to notify climbers who are some distance from a volcano's crater. I think I can manage the situation easier if prompted. The system makes us reassured. It will also help us pick up our next summit. But the system isn't perfect. Several volcanoes and the surveillance aren't covered by community wireless systems. Mobile phone coverage is also not available in some areas. Climbers still need to protect themselves by making sure they have all the most up-to-date information. Yasaka Weki, NHK World. More and more atomic bomb survivors across Japan say they're finding fewer chances to pass on their legacy to future generations. An NHK survey suggests many of them are staying silent about their experiences. 1,000 survivors across the nation were contacted, and 958 of them responded. 39% said they have fewer or no chances to talk about their ordeals at home or schools. 24% said they have more opportunities than in the past. 23% said there's been no change. The survey found among those who say they're speaking less, 36% cited their failing health and also a lack of requests. 19% said they're less eager to talk about their experiences. An 86-year-old survivor said people have stopped asking for a first-hand account. Another said the public sees the atomic bombings as events of the past and they're not interested in hearing about them. As World War II raged 70 years ago, Japan faced a shortage of manpower. High school students were recruited to work in factories and demolish buildings. Over 7,000 of them were killed when the bomb fell. 
This year, a recently discovered document has shed new light on their fate. NHK World's Naho Hashimoto reports. This is Shintok High School for Girls in Hiroshima. More than 400 students here perished in the bombing. A document recording the tragic events that followed was discovered just this year in the principal's office. It's an administrative journal. The journal first entry is for August 6, the day of the bombing. Just after 8 a.m., all of Hiroshima was burned to ash by a single flash and explosion. Our school was completely destroyed, and countless faculty members and students are missing or were killed. I could not hold back my tears. I was really surprised a journal like this existed. I think it's a valuable document because there's an entry from August 6th, the day the bomb was dropped. The journal was kept by Yazo Watanabe, the vice principal. He was at his home when the bomb exploded, but headed to the school straight away. The school building was destroyed in the explosion and the fire that followed. Parents turned up at the school looking for their children. More family members are coming in search of their loved ones. I don't know what to tell them. All I have to give them are my tears. They barely have any hope left. Their eyes are red from crying. I can't look at them. Taeko Teramae was a senior at the school. She was walking 550 meters from the epicenter. The brass left her blind in one eye. Most documents and pictures from the time were destroyed in the bombing. Teramae never knew exactly what happened at the school that day. For the first time, Watanabe's journal tells her. The entire junior class was preparing to leave school to clear the evacuated buildings in the Tsurumi Bridge area. The disaster occurred just as they were about to walk out of the school gates. It was an utter tragedy. The journal said the students were killed instantly. I can still picture our younger schoolmates sending us off to work. Teramae says the journal is an important find, not just for her, but for students of today. I hope people will understand why he called the events an utter tragedy. Many of our schoolmates were killed instantly on their way to work. I hope people will take a lesson from this journal and never have to experience this kind of tragedy again. Watanabe's was a la cry of devastation. Seventy years later, his rediscovered journal offers something else, a message to future generations. Naho Hashimoto, NHK Wars, Hiroshima. Japanese Prime Minister Abe and U.S. Vice President Joe Biden have discussed a report by the whistleblowing website WikiLeaks. Abe called on Biden to investigate alleged spying by a U.S. intelligence agency on the Japanese government and leading companies. They talked by phone for half an hour on Wednesday. The U.S. side proposed the discussion. Biden said President Barack Obama and himself are very sorry that the issue has sparked controversy in Japan, causing problems for Prime Minister Abe and his government. WikiLeaks said on Friday that the U.S. National Security Agency wiretapped Japan's government and companies dating back to at least 2006, when the first Abe administration was in office. Biden told Abe the U.S. government currently does not conduct activities that could undermine bilateral ties, based on a presidential order issued in 2014. 
He added that he hopes to further strengthen cooperation as the two countries face various threats. Prime Minister Abe said if the report was true, it could undermine trust between the allies, and he would have no choice but to express serious concern. Chief Cabinet Secretary Yoshide Suga declined to comment on whether Washington explained the matter in detail or admitted to wiretapping Japanese targets before 2014.